then we spoke last week on being a star. Tell your neighbor, be a star. Not a celebrity. A star. Amen. Everybody want to be a celebrity. And that was taken from the story of the wise men. Somebody say wise men. We learned that in actuality there might have been not three, but a whole gang of wise men that were traveling from Persia. And so when they... <laughs> wow. I'm going to need somebody to break up Steve and, and Kells. This is... Amen. Amen. See how God works? Get them out of here, Maddie. <laughs> he ejected. Um, but the wise men were Persian, people who weren't expected to serve Jesus or even know about Jesus. And an unexpected people, the Persians, ended up in an unexpected place, worshiping Jesus. I love that. I love that about God. I love to see people who we never thought would serve God, serve God. Amen. I love to see people that, you know, you know, church people are like that. I had people tell me that before. There was, I went overseas to, <laughs> anyway, I was at a place where I invited somebody. I said, yo, you know this person, invite them to the ministry. They're like, them, they'll never get saved. Don't even waste your time. Church people think that God is not powerful enough to save whomever he wants. Yeah. God save anybody. anybody. He saved you. Right. Who told you you were good? Amen. You didn't know that at some point somebody probably looked at you and said, You ever ran into somebody and told them you're going to church town? They're like, You? They were thinking that about you. If you told somebody you're going to church now and they said, What? They, they, they never told you about Jesus because they thought you'd never get saved. But God is good. He saves whoever he wants. And here comes unexpected people to an unexpected place. Why? Because they saw an unexpected light. And just like that light unexpectedly showed up in their life, God wants you to become that light to somebody else. So that unexpected people, you know who the unexpected people are? Them same co-workers you think are heathens? Those unexpected people can actually serve God. If you be you, <laughs> be an unexpected light in somebody's life. Tell your neighbor, be a star. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Today, what I want to talk to you about is just maybe a couple of lessons that I've learned from the Christmas story. Probably is not new to some of you, but... Things that I think we ought to pay attention to. Amen? Amen. Let's pray over God's word. Father, your word is blessed. I pray that you would speak to the hearts of your people today. Cause them to be transformed and changed by the power of the gospel. By the power of your word. And allow us to be transformed and not just informed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There was a man who was an alcoholic. And as you would know, alcohol causes Numerous problems in people's lives. Amen. And this man was an alcoholic and he drank to the point where his family's life was being ruined. And he had a friend who wanted to come and intervene. An intervention was necessary to save this man and save all the people that would have died or been hurt because of his issue, his addiction. So the friend went looking for him and he found him in a bar and he was drinking and the friend went, walked up to him and said, Jack, I've been looking for you. And the friend sat next to him at the bar and the friend said, Jack, I'm here because I want to help. The friend reached into his coat pocket and while reaching in, he said to the bartender, bartender, I need two drinks. Give me one glass filled with water and one filled with liquor. So the bartender brought the drinks and the man reached into his jacket and he pulled out two living worms. He said, Jack, I want you to pay close attention now. And he dropped one worm into the water and one worm into the, 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 the liquor, the, 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 the one filled with the alcohol. And he said, I want you to begin to observe now. And Jack is looking and as they looked, the one in the water swimming freely. He's alive and well. The one in the alcohol begins to slowly die. 
from all the alcohol in there and the worm sinks to the bottom and dies. Jack puts his head down. His friend looks at him and says, Jack, do you see the point? Jack said, yeah, I see the point. He said, Jack, I don't doubt that you see the point, but I just need you to say it to me, man, so that I'm sure you are clear on what's happening here. Can you tell me what the point is? Jack said, if you drink a lot of alcohol, you could kill a lot of worms. <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah, wasn't that the point? You alcoholic. <laughs> Jack heard the story, seen the demonstration, and missed the point. Oftentimes, what we are looking for is right in front of us, but we see, but don't really see. We miss the point. Christmas is one of those times that is so obvious, the world celebrates it, some people are into the festivities. They go shopping. They have Christmas dinner. They got Christmas everything. But they miss the point totally of why Christmas exists. Christmas exists for very important reasons. And I want to help you with some of those reasons today. And people miss these reasons for many reasons. For some of us, we are just like... The first century, the first century was so busy that they had no time to even pay attention that the God of the universe had manifested himself in the flesh. How do you get so busy? How do you get so occupied? And you say, yeah, the world is terrible. Not just the world, but even the chief priests and scribes who read and saw that he was to be found in Bethlehem didn't even think to bother to go look for him. Why? Because you're so busy. I want to say this to you. Be careful how busy you are. Let me help some of you. You live in America, and America tells you, be on your grind. Come on, y'all heard it. Be great today. Well, strive for greatness. Amen, y'all. We hear all those things, right? Come on, tell your neighbor, be great. You got to be careful because what that translates to an American mind is do more. And I want you to know that busyness does not equal productivity. Amen. Half of the people that be talking on oh my grind ain't producing nothing. <laughs> nothing ain't going nowhere. Productivity does not, uh, uh, busyness does not equal productivity. Neither does busyness guarantee happiness. Oftentimes, busyness steals happiness. You hear what I'm saying? Some of you are so on the grind for this money that promises you joy that you are depressed and is taking that money to go see a therapist right now and it's a whole cycle of brokenness. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in this place. Y'all quiet today. Amen? Y'all hearing me? And so, so... You got to be careful that you don't become a people so busy that you're missing what you're actually chasing that is right in front of you. And that is the joy that comes from Jesus, the peace that comes from knowing Jesus. People, if you are somebody who has to do something to find joy, you will always have to do to maintain joy. And so you will have to work for joy when God wants you to work from joy. There's a difference. Things become, things become, listen, there was a time I used to do music for joy. I mean, I was top five dead or alive. Who said yes, you were? Come on, Sister Denise. Come on, let's go start a different church. The rest of these people, they got no revelation. Come on. And there was a time I was doing music from joy. But when you start believing your own hype, And start believing your own little platform. Then you start working for applause and to be seen and all this. And then now you're not working from joy. You're working for joy. And when you, and there's a difference. When you work from joy, the thing is so cool, you don't even care. You don't, I don't care. 
I'm like me or don't like me, I'm popping. When you work for joy, now people control your joy. And the thing becomes so frustrating. Busyness might keep you busy and fill your schedule, but it can fracture your life. I've seen many men who say, Pastor, I'm working so hard for my family. Only to come and sit. What's the purpose of this meeting today? We divorcing. Why? Because I was busy working for them. That just doesn't make sense. We live in a society that is always pushing do stuff. Do, do, do. Don't get me wrong. You have to be productive in your life and be something in society. Give back to society. But don't find your meaning in what you do. Find your meaning and your value in the God that created you. Work from joy, not for joy. You understand what I'm saying today? And the first century was so busy that they missed the Savior. Don't you miss the Savior this Christmas. Tell your neighbor, don't miss the Savior. Here's some lessons of why Christmas is important. Number one, you've heard me say this before. I've learned from watching Jesus and the way he was born that it is not how you start, it's how you finish. Come on, talk to me in here. Amen. There's still hope for the Knicks. Come on. I changed my mind. I'm in the spirit now? All right. Thank you. Y'all often heard me tell you this. How many many of you all got a Sam Bowie jersey? You are lying in the presence of the Lord. How many even know who he is? He was drafted over Michael Jordan. They were fighting for him over. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Do you follow what I'm saying? I mean, look at the great gift that Steph Curry is to the world. Come on, guys. Come on. Somebody send up a praise for Brother Steph. Lord, we pray for Steph and his family. Protect them as they travel to and fro in the Bay Area. Lord, we know that he knows there's no other king but you. All right. I'll get back serious. Sometimes we look at things that usually have a grandeur beginning. Don't be fooled by the beginning. I've seen marriages with grandeur. The dress she's wearing, $8,000 as she walks down the aisle. And the tux he got on. Because you know men are worse than women now at these weddings with what they're going to wear. Ridiculous in these streets. He's got a $2,000 suit on. We thank God for the ministry of Portobello for some of us. Come on, somebody. Make some noise for Portobello. You got to have you two Portobellas in it. $50 for three suits? I keep you a thousand of them. And shoes? And they tail it in the back? I've been there. Still there. (laughs) The hall costs $20,000. $30,000 $30,000 and all types of luxury cars going to pick us up. And we're going to have a... I've I'm, I'm, I seen it all at the weddings. I've seen it all. I, I went to weddings where the couple got married and then they took off in the boat and had all of us just stand and watch them go for a boat ride like idiots. I mean, the boat going around in a circle and wow, and then fireworks. See, people come up from the floor. Come up from the floor. And they dance in this... Ah! Floor elevating, they elevate above us. It's like, wow. Is that how some people go to luxury? We're going to get married in Dubai. Marry in America. We don't do that. We get married overseas. Big wedding. It's not how big it starts. Because them same big wedding. 
Give them six months. <laughs> you should have kept your money. <laughs> Pastor Rich would have done it for five dollars. <laughs> it's not how big you get married, is if you can endure the marriage. Yep. Y'all hear what I'm saying in this place? See people come out, oh check me out, bro. I got my, my LLC, I got my nonprofit, I got my logo, my business about to be popping. Look at me! Bought signs, got all you. You in your mind, you think once you put your logo on Instagram, it's a wrap. You get four likes the first week. And it was your aunt, your mom. Carlene, <laughs> you could always depend on Carlene for a life. Come on, Sister Carlene. Carlene, God has given you the ministry of likes. <laughs> Let's close in prayer. <laughs> I can't continue after this. In your mind, you thought this is it. It's not how big you start. It's can you endure when customers say we don't like your product, come back. Your product is no good. Look at the devil. You ain't the devil, you're trash. We all ain't. See, y'all, we got to stop this Christian stuff, man. We, just because you were, it's only in the church we let people sing. We let people do, but he loved the Lord. He faithful. We got people doing stuff who can't, listen, everybody can't drive in the same lane. It's going to be traffic. Get in the lane you belong. I'm sorry if I offended you. Really not, though. In your mind, it's the, you know, it's the grandeur of the thing. Not only that, let, 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 me, let me flip that. Some of you feel because I was born in a, in, a, in a family that was broken, it gives you the right to be messed up now. You don't know where I, if you understood where I came from, you don't understand why we are. The, this generation here, I tell you, America don't have problems that we start to create problems. Like, our problems is stuff we make up. <laughs> I'm telling you. You go to other places and you say, what do y'all feel about this issue? They're like, that ain't even an issue here. We're trying to get water. We ain't got time to discuss that. You understand what I'm saying? And we, we live in a society that tells us where you come from is the excuse for why you cannot change your life. The devil is a liar. I don't care if you grew up in the worst environments. If somebody went through what you went through and still made it, you don't have an excuse. Well, I'm different. I know. You like excuse. Be careful you don't have a victim mentality. We have been taught, especially our demographic of people, that we are victims. Yes. And that, and then when we come down to it, we like, yo, the man is oppressing us. What? I've lived here. I'm not saying America doesn't have issues. But ain't nobody stopping me. The reason I am where I am in my life and the places that I am not, that I want to get to, it's nobody's fault but mine. What needs to change is not everybody else. And let me tell you this. I'm going to help somebody today. Nobody owes you nothing. Not even your mom or dad. I only owe my kids enough soup till 18. I can give you more though, Savannah, because I love you. No money. You said money. She said money, money. <laughs> Try and use me in my emotional moment. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Nobody owes you nothing. That's right. Not because you came from a certain class, not because you're a certain race, not because you came from a certain environment means that God can't use your life. 
Are you willing to let go of where you're from and accept the God that has got a master plan for you and say, Father, use my life. My past does not stop you from being God in my life. As a matter of fact, you are able to take my mess and make it a message. You are actually able to take what I thought was terrible and cause it to be my blessing. Which brings me to my second thing about Christmas that I've learned. That sometimes God gives you gifts and they come in the strangest of wrappings. Let me explain it this way. Sometimes God's gift will confuse you. Sometimes God's gift won't make you feel like it's a gift. Sometimes your gift will even make you question God if this is a gift. Because God gives gifts like here's a baby and you are never married. You're a virgin. In a society that says you can be stoned to death if caught. But it's a gift. Here's God's gift. I'm about to get married, Joe. Me and Mary. Oh, I've been waiting for a minute. Me and Mary about to get married, pregnant. Mary, what? <laughs> yeah, marry her. What? I ain't, but who the, Here's a man. God says this is a gift. And the Bible tells you in the book of Matthew that he was worried and afraid. That the angel had to tell him, do not be afraid, but marry her. Because the child is from the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you losing your job to you is a chaotic situation. Because you did nothing wrong. You've been working there hard. You've been giving your all to it. And still the company turns around and fires you. Or the economy goes bad. And somehow it affects your type of living. And you're fired. And you're walking out of there crying. You don't know that the loss of the job is gift wrappings from heaven. Oh, I, I, we've been together six years and they're gonna, they promised me they're going to marry me and then they walked out on you. What you should have been saying is, God, why didn't you make them walk out on me earlier? Right. According to KB, you've been dating that girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes when people walk out on you, that's heaven gift wrapping stuff to you. Sometimes the things that you, I'm telling you, heaven birth ministries from some strange places, Amen. strange things. I look at when my father died, that was a tragedy, but only the God of the universe could take something like that and cause death that drives people from God to God. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying in this place. Only God could reach. That's why the Bible says he's the same. We understand today and forever. But the Bible adds that part. He's the same yesterday. Which means that he was. Even when I live today. God is the. This, this, this is good y'all. God is the only entity. That says. I'm still the God of yesterday. But yesterday is done. It can't be used. It can't be changed. I said, I'm still the God. In other words, God is saying, if you didn't know by now, I'm the only entity that can reach into your past and fix your future. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying in this place, boy. Gifting sometimes, sometimes you will cause you to even doubt it was God. And let me, let me help you. Some of you are not just gifted with strange gift raptums. You have natural gifts and talents in you. Let me help you. Sometimes when God gifts you with an ability to do business well, an ability to sing, to do whatever, some people are coming to give gifts to your gifts, and some people are looking to kill your gift. Come on now. Not everybody wants to celebrate you. Y'all hear what I'm saying in this place? 
Some people only follow you on social media to make sure you don't get more than 50 likes. It's a crazy world we live in. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes... <laughs> sometimes... <laughs> That's my friend. Sometimes when, you, when God gives you a gift and talent, everybody's not applauding it. Some people love you and some people are wanting to kill you. You understand that? But I want to bring this home. I'm done. Here's the most major lesson that I've learned. Let me go back to the first two. It's not the grandeur of how you enter in Christianity that matters is if you can persevere till the end. For the Bible says the race is not given to the swift, but he that endures to the end. Being a Christian is not how many scriptures you can quote today, is when tomorrow's storms hit, will those scriptures be activated in your life? Do you follow what I'm saying? So I don't wanna give you a bunch of positive thinking, I wanna give you gospel today. And the gospel is that Christ has come to die to save you and transform you. Some people accept that and they want to save everybody. You ever meet somebody when they get saved? <laughs> Pastor, it's about to be on. You don't know. Now that I'm in this church, watch what's going to happen. <laughs> what's going to happen in six months, I'm going to be counseling you, telling you, hold on. <laughs> Being a Christian is not for the soft hearted. It's easier to do what they do. It's easier to go sleep with anybody. It's easy to go drink something. It's, it's, we, it's easy. It's easy to not be a good father. It's easy to not be a good husband. It's easy to not be a person of integrity. Try doing this. And you'll realize you can't without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm by no means perfect. And so what I've learned is that in Christianity is he that endured to the end. But here's the biggest reason for Christmas. You know, pain is an indication of a bigger problem. I don't like pain. I think pain is the problem, right? That's how I think. Like if I get a cut or I get a backache or a headache, I'm like, yo, give me a pill to stop the pain. You go to a doctor, though. The doctor's not just trying to stop the pain. The doctor's trying to do what is called the pain is pointing to the symptoms of something else. And what the doctor is trying to do is find the cure for the problem because all the pain is is the indication of a bigger problem. So when you cut yourself, you're like, stop hurting. That pain exists to tell you you've been cut. And so stop the bleeding. Because if you don't stop the bleeding, you'll bleed to death. Has anybody ever been cut and you didn't know? You just felt the pain and looked down. And as a result, you said, oh my goodness, I'm bleeding. And you were able to attend to it. If that pain didn't exist, you would not have known you're bleeding. Pain indicates something's wrong. It's the same thing with emotional pain. Emotional pain indicates to you something's wrong. When that boyfriend or girlfriend walk out on you, oh, I don't feel like I can't breathe. <laughs> That's an indication that you might have put a little too much of your heart in somebody else's hands. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> what? Come on, man. We ain't going to grow if we stay this ghetto, man. Come on, man. The intellectuals are going to leave. They're going to be like, that. I don't go there. That's a lot of mercy church. Come on, man. The two smart people are like, no. I've heard amen. I've heard preach pastor. I've heard. I've never heard a lot of mercy. <laughs> Then heard it all today. If you're smart, please don't leave the church. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let me come right back. A lot of mercy. <laughs> I 
Make sure you edit all this out, right, Brandon? <laughs> hey, man. That's why we can't go live yet. <laughs> Can you imagine the comments at this point? Like, Did he just say a lot of mercy? What's going on? <laughs> we go viral. Amen. Pain indicates a bigger problem. And when you have emotional pain, you go into a therapist, the job of the therapist is to try to help you to find what's causing it. Because the causation of the problem is what you want to solve. When you look at planet Earth, I see all this human trafficking going on. Every day is another missing lady. Forgot how many thousands of women they said just been missing in the last year. Now they harvesting organs and that type of stuff. Please be safe out in these streets. That's why you need your Second Amendment. I live in the wrong state to be saying that, right? New York is we dead if anything ever happened here. We don't got nothing to protect. Amen. Amen. I see so many diseases in this world. As a pastor, I see people with cancer. I see people with, you name it, dying. There's nothing you can do. Death reigns. As a pastor, I've talked to people who are abused. Child molestation, sexual molestation. There's people in this room that has been molested. I don't even have to hear you tell me to know. The numbers tell me. And that's not a women problem alone. There's men in this room that's been molested. There's racism in this world. There's death. There's chaos. There's all these things in this world. And the world is screaming in pain. And all these things are symptoms of a bigger problem. You know what that problem is? Sin. The world is broken because men are sinners. I watched a documentary the other day when China had the one child policy. And I saw how many children were thrown into bags and thrown into garbage disposals. Children. And then I said, wow, this is terrible. And then the Lord quickly said, look at your own nation. Babies are aborted. What do they say? One baby every 20 seconds. I'm not here to tell anybody. It's your right to do whatever you want with yourself. And every human have rights, including the baby in the womb. If you've ever done anything like that or been into any of these situations, this is not to condemn you, but the grace of God is big enough because I'm broken like everybody else in this world and I have done a lot of terrible things. And those terrible things, society wants to get me to blame God, but it's my responsibility. I gotta look at my own actions God is not the reason the world is starving. Greedy people are. It's enough food to feed. How much food do you throw out? God is not the reason marriages break up. Selfish people are. God is not the reason for any of this. God is the hope for this. And my sin, my sin is the reason Jesus died. And this world will never be cured because what they're trying to cure is symptoms and not the problem. Oh boy. If I could just fix. Fix what? You got to fix your heart. Let me tell you something. There ain't a thing in this earth that you are chasing that will bring you joy. I promise you that. I promise you that. I've been privileged to sit around wealthy and poor 
All of them, same depression, same stuff, same, same stuff. The same weed we smoke in the ghetto. They come there and buy it. <laughs> same crack cocaine that killing. They got next drugs. Same, same. Why? Why is the whole world medicating and doing this stuff? Because it's pointing to a problem. It's a sin problem. Look at what the book of Ephesians said. And I'm done. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You were what? You were what? In other words, can a dead man help his situation? You ever went to the funeral and be like, hey, bro, get up, man. Come on. They're crying. <laughs> You'd be the weirdest dude in the funeral. A dead man can't fix his own problem. We can't fix our sin problem. We needed an outside source. He says, once you were dead in your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying. Don't get it twisted. Those who think I don't obey the devil or God, I'm still trying to decide. You've decided already. Obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse. Y'all seen this? Those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way. Following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our own very nature, we were subject to God's anger. So you see when people walk around talking about I'm a good person and only God could judge me. Let me help you right now about how God feels and what that judgment is going to be. You are subject to God's. This is what we don't tell the world. We just want to love everybody. But love tells truth. And when you don't serve God, you on the other side of that equation. He says you were subject, what, following your passions and inclination of our own sinful nature. By our own very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God, who was so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Everybody look at this. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. That's the point of Christmas. That's why he was born. He was born to die. And he was focused on his mission. It didn't matter who was with him. It didn't matter who was trying to kill him. It didn't matter who stood with him. When he went to the cross, every friend left him. But he hung there for one reason. That you and I could have life. How dare we try to find life in anything else other than him? How dare you see Jesus as a means to an end? God exists so I could get popping. You're going to pop. God is the end result. At the end of all the chase, God will be there telling you, I was here all the time and you missed me. God is everything. Let me tell you, he's a good God. I'm telling you, he's been good to me. Brother asked me this morning how I'm doing. I said, if I complain, I should be beaten with many stripes. You know you're getting old when you start talking like that. You're like, how you doing? You don't even say, oh, I'm chilling. you chilling the way you're not. Like, if I complain, I should be flogged. God has been good to me. He's been good to me, man. I ain't had the, the best of beginnings in my ministry. I ain't have all golden moments. Somebody interviewed me the other day. They're doing a, 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 a documentary on Christian hip-hop. They came to me, they interviewed me. They said, so 
How'd you transition from the world doing Christian rap? I said, transition? I never did music for the world. They said, what? I said, always rap for the Lord. And then I said this, and I intend to finish for him. Because it's not how you start. It's how you finish. I'm so blessed, and you are too. Don't worry about the strange rap things. God is able. Don't worry about your past. Don't worry about those things. God is able to change. But what he needs you to do is not refuse him, but to accept him into your life and accept his will. This week, I just, man, I know he, he don't like this attention. He don't like this, but I'm his father. <laughs> I'm going to love you. And let me tell you something. I've learned the greatest lessons about God. I know my time's up, but I don't got nowhere to go. <laughs> so <laughs> I learned the greatest lessons about God with my children. Ain't a thing these children could do that makes me unfather them. It don't matter what they do. They are my children. And then I understood why God says, what shall separate you from my love? The only thing that can separate them from my love is them. And you know how they would have to do that? By refusing it. Because even if I'm still like, so man, you tripping, behold that. It's when she started to look at me and say, I want nothing from you, nothing to do with you. I don't even want to be associated with you. And the only reason I cannot father you is because you've refused me. And the only reason God can't father you is if you slap his hands. And you know, we do that a lot. So I looked at my life this week. I learned so much about, you know. And then I, I had a moment in the car. I'm driving in my car and I'm listening to some music. And I'm like, yo, this is good. My kids think I got OCD. My daughter got a whole song she sings around me. When it start acting up. And I'm listening to this music in the car. And I'm like, yo, this is good. How do you do that? How do you... And I keep asking him to help me, but he won't help me, and he won't help me, won't let me help him get this money so we could get this money together. He's so selfish. <laughs> but I'm driving in the car and I'm listening to music, and I turn to my wife and I said, Yo, this is Sevy's work. And my wife looked at me with the same feeling like, I know. Now, why that's a big deal, and he may never understand this, was because 20 years ago, next month, I could have aborted him. My ministry was, wasn't birthed. I came out of this, I got this doctorate. I learned in the classrooms of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and to know that, just look at some of the beginnings and to sit and listen to what God, we bless people, man. It's always something you could look at your life and say, look, look at what God is doing. Keep living. Keep going. Keep submitting your life to God. God is going to give you breakthroughs. God is going to open doors. God is God. The same God that said when he proclaimed to the angels that this is peace on earth and goodwill to all men. It's for you. Your hope is here. Trust him. Find your joy in him. Seek him. Put him first. And everything else that follows is a sidebar. But God's got to be number one.